Hello, welcome back. Today we are going to look at how to get information from the Arduino board in a way that we can see specific numbers and data. Up to now, the only way we've been getting information from the Arduino board is looking at the LED and watching it turn on and off. What we're going to do this time is we are going to use something called the serial monitor. Now, serial is just the computer looking at zeros and ones in a series of information coming into the computer. And the computer does that thousands of times a second. And the speed at which we do that is called the baud rate. So that serial number, zeros and ones, coming into the computer corresponds to letters and characters that the computer is reading or displaying. Those letters and characters are represented by numbers. Now the way we know what those letters and characters are is that information is stored in something called the ASCII character code set, which is a collection of numbers and the corresponding characters. For our purposes, we really just need to know that that information is done inside the Arduino. When we get our code running, we're going to display on the serial monitor the information that is coming from the button that we had built and also the information that's coming from the potentiometer. So let's go ahead and take a look at some code. One of the things we can do though is we can use code that we've used before. So for example, if we go into Tinkercad and go to circuits, we can see that there's all the projects that we had created before. So if I go into one of my projects here and click on this little gear, I can click on duplicate and open up that project as a copy. So when I do that, Tinkercad makes a copy for me. Now, the one thing we want to do is we want to add our button back into this project. So I'm going to find my push button. And I'm going to put it right here in column number 26. And then I'm going to collect, connect a blue wire, because it was blue we used before, to pin 2. And then we're going to connect a black wire. So make sure that the wire is unselected down to the negative on our board. So we now have added our button back in and we're really just going to read the data from our button. The next thing we want to do is modify the code. So the code that we're going to had in there before we don't want anymore. I want to get rid of that. And what we're going to do is get the code from here inside a canvas. And I'm going to copy it right under source code for serial monitor. And I'm going to paste that into my project. So now here's the thing. The way it copied and pasted, there is no spacing or formatting. And it doesn't look very good. It's hard to read. The computer doesn't care. The computer would run it, except for the fact that I have some blanks down here that you're going to need to fill in. In order to format this better, what we want to do is add in some spacing. So let me zoom into the code and let you see that a little bit better. There we go. So I can see that I should have a space here after my global variables. And then you'll notice that I have these curly cues with all this code in setup and all of this should be indented. So I'm going to highlight it and just press the tab key and that will indent it for me. And then I should do the same thing for loop. So I'm going to go out down here and do that. I'm going to make sure I get all of the code. So I scroll to the bottom here. There we go. Too far. Sometimes this is tricky to do. And there we go. Press the tab key and it tabs in. The other thing I want to do is put in a line break after any set of comments again to make it easier to read. The computer isn't going to care. It's really just for us so we can see better 
the different sections I've created here. Now these things marked with the forward slashes are called comments and they give us information about the program. And I put these comments in here so you can see exactly what the code does. You'll also notice that down here I've left some blanks. We're going to have to fill those in before it runs because otherwise the program's not going to run. Let's go and start talking about some of the code lines here, line by line. The first set is our global variables. We've seen that before. Uh, I've declared the LED to pin number three, uh, the button pin to pin number two, and the potentiometer pin to uh, analog zero, A0. Then I set up my pin modes. That all has to be done in the setup. So you need to make sure you have your LED pin set to output, the button pin set to input pull up, because remember we have that idea that we want to make sure that when we're one at zero, it actually zeroes out and doesn't have any interfering voltage. And then we set our pot pin this time to input. So the pot pin is going to be getting information from the potentiometer. Now I have a new line here. It's called serial.begin. Serial is the name of the serial input on whatever COM port or communication port is on the board. Some boards have more than one serial, so we would say serial 1 or serial 2 or serial 3 and so forth. Then we tell the computer that we want to start listening. That's what the begin does. And then the 9600, that's the baud rate. That's the bits per second the computer will be giving the information. That's pretty slow, actually. 9600 is the slowest baud rate we can have. Then we have our loop, which we're going to repeat over and over and over again. The first thing that we do in our loop is we're going to read the digital read of the button pin. So we're going to read whether it's pushed or not pushed. Then we're going to read our pot value with the analog pot pin. And we're going to filter the pot value by dividing the 4 because we know the filtered pot value when we want to output that um, signal to something else the digital, the analog write can only go between 0 and 255, whereas the analog read goes between 0 and 1023. So we want to scale that filtered pot value. There's our analog write. So this will turn the LED on using the filtered pot value and make our LED act like a dimmer. We did this before in the last project. Now the new command, serial print. So we're going to send a string literal. Now the reason why I'm using the word literal is because the word button is literally between the two quotation marks. There are times when we can store a string in a variable and we call that just a string. When we can literally see the characters we're going to use between the two quotes, we call that a string literal. Now here I left the blank and I'm going to let you fill this in. What variable would we use to to print to the screen, to the serial monitor, the result of the button. And I have a hint, you could probably find it by looking somewhere up here. Then we're going to print the potentiometer value. And again, you have to find the variable. And then we're going to print the filtered value, which is pot divided by 4. So again, you have to find that variable. So let me fix my screen here. And then I'm going to let you all see how this runs. I don't want it zoomed in anymore. And I want to get to a working program that has the code in it proper. There we go. OK, so now you can see that I have everything the same. I'm just not going to show you the code this time. I'm going to start the simulation and you'll notice that my light will get brighter with a potentiometer. I can press the button, but the button doesn't really do anything. It doesn't turn the light on and off because we didn't do that in the code. But what we're going to do is look at our serial monitor. You know, I wish I could make this bigger. I guess I can't. Okay, so let me try that again. If we look at our serial monitor, we can see the button state is one. I think I could probably zoom in. 
There we go. There we go. So we can see the button state is one, which means it's not pressed. We talked about that before. The potentiometer is 225, and we can see that the uh, division of that is four. Let me see if I can get to my components here. There's my potentiometer, and I can see if I can turn it. I can change these numbers. If I can get to my button, Let's see if I can do this. There we go. There's my button. You can see when I press the button, the button state changes from zero to one. So that is how to use the serial monitor. That is all we have for today. I will see you next time.